We are very excited. We are at Selsey, Selsey East, East Beach, just straight up over the wall from the East Beach car park. Conditions are looking really good. There's not a lot of weed showing on the on the shoreline. There's no clumps of weed in the wall as of yet. Well, there's a few bits, but nothing major. It's so clear. And we're here to target bream. We're after the bream. Let's hope we can get them in. We've got two little tricks. I'm going to show you. Let's see if we can get the bream in. Are you excited, Aaron? I am excited, yeah, because this looks really good. And this is Aaron's first time at Celsi, so let's hope he uh, gets over the Celsi curse pretty quick and catches a fish. But it's looking good. So, before we get our bream rods out, which is what we're predominantly here for, we've come to fish for black bream, we are gonna put out our other rods. I'm gonna target something at distance on big, big bait, whether it be a smooth hand or a ray, and Am's gonna drop in short, just beyond the groins, for a bass. So, a big bass, he says. Is that what you want? That's what I want, yeah. A big bass. So I'll just show you what I'll just show you what I've got on my hook. I've got a large, very large bait. That's bluey and squid wrap there. With two six O's panel on a on a uh, pulley dropper. I'm just hoping the tide pull and the weed doesn't start ripping this round. I've got 170 on that as a weight to hopefully hold me in place. So I'm going to put that out in a minute, but um, we'll just have a look at what Aaron's doing in a sec on his bass rod, and then we'll probably cast them out together. Right, so Aaron's got his rod set up for the bass um, on a rear, on a, what's that, a long range rig, isn't it? Oh, really? Long range rig. And there's Aaron's bait. Which is a two lug worm with what's that a squid head or wrap or a bit of squid body squid body with some of the essences it's always good to have a bit of essence, you need a bit of essence. yep um so you're ready to put that out are you I am ready. so you're going to clip that up And even with a short cast, it's best to clip it up, otherwise you, you'll get, get a tangle on a cast or the worm can fly up the snood. So even if you're only going 30 yards, it's best to clip these rigs up. That's right. Right now, the question is where to put this bait? Well, I think I can see like three 10 pound bass just out there. Oh, might as well cast there then. Might as well give it a go, innit? You? you know. Might as well start off easy. Just at the end of the groin, yeah? Yeah. Nice. That's Right, I'm going to get mine out. Well, it's quite good to point out that all along South Sea East Beach, there's these groined off sections and they're only, they're what, 40 metres wide? Yeah. So you end up basically fishing one to yourself. So when we're fishing together like this, we're going to put our big, baits out to the side so i has gone to the right hand side i'm going to go to the left hand side with my big bait and then we'll show you what we're going to do when we're targeting what what we come here for with the bream but let me just put my big bait out and then uh, we'll go through all that
Right, Aaron's here. He's um, just put his bass rod out and now he's baiting up his um, bream rig so he's going to show us what he's doing and what he's got. Okay, well I've gone with a basic turtle flapper, shortish snoods, foot, foot and a half long, uh, rig body 050 line, uh, hook length 040, hook size, size 4s, long shanks, although I'm not used to fishing with long shank hooks for black bream. That's because I was living in the Canaries for 15 years, actually running a fishing business over there, gone fishing. Uh, and we catch the black bream over there with similar size hooks, but the shorter shanks. And the reason for that is we use prawns over there, very popular bait, quite expensive over here. So uh, I've opted to not use prawns at five pounds for a dozen or a dozen and a half when we can buy the whole box for that in Spain. So uh, I've gone with mackerel, salted the mackerel God. overnight Let's just show to him. get the extra liquid uh, out of it and make it a tougher bait. So there's the salted mackerel. It's made it a lot tougher, but it's still got all, the, all of its oils and all of its juices in there that, that are essential to attract the, but the you, bream in. As you can see, it stays perfectly intact when you're dealing with small pieces and uh, baiting them up onto your hooks and using bait elastic to hold them on. Uh, if it had been just raw mackerel, that would have lost quite a few bits by now. But obviously salted it doesn't. So here we are, the bait is, uh, the rig is baited up, ready to cast. Um, uh, but since I haven't fished here before, where do you think I should cast? Well, Long, longer than the boys? Oh no, yeah, I wouldn't be going longer than the boys. You'll get a really, there's a really uh, strong tide rip here, especially we've got, we've got quite a big tide today. I think it's about 73 coefficient. So I'm, I'm more than certain that this is going to start ripping around to the left. Okay, so so I'd be going... Cast slightly to the right. See, there's a little bit of debris out there, short of the boat. There's a bit of debris sort of there. Yeah. That's, okay, sort of, okay. that's sort of the range you want to be going. 70 okay. yards, 60, 70 so yards? 15 yards, 20 yards short of the, the boy. So now we have got another secret weapon though, haven't we? Uh, to try and get these we green We have another secret weapon, which took me best part of two hours. I thought it was like 20 minutes. Two hours. 20 minutes. Best part of two hours. <laughs> Uh, some, somebody was doing other stuff and he uh, didn't realise how quickly the time was. <laughs> Basically what we have in here is chum. And I made the consistency so that you can turn it into nice balls like this. So we can get a fair bit of distance. And the chum consists of two loaves of cheap sliced white bread whereby I broke every slice with these fair hands. <laughs> these fair hands, Greg. Sorry, mate, sorry. <laughs> uh, plucking them into small bits, as you can see, bits no bigger than that. And in the same bucket went all the leftover mackerel from the six mackerel that I filleted and salted. So the heads, the guts, even the spines chopped up in the bucket. Then, I added uh, four tins of uh, cheap, cheap tuna in oil and four tins of sardine in oil, crumbled up, every layer of bread, pour in the oil and crumble up the bits of the tuna and the sardine, knead that in and then carry on plucking bits of bread on top of that layer, a few more slices, crack some more tins open, add that in and then mix the whole lot together and you get this kind of consistency. So I'm hoping I'll be able to lob these balls out 20, 25 yards, more or less halfway to where we'll be fishing, hoping that there'll be enough of a slick going out to the hooks and a bit of a chum trail going on as well. Uh, and after that, it'll be just a case of experimenting whether we go shorter on the casts yeah. or stay where we are. Excellent. Right, well, let's get this bait out.
Right. You ready? Now I can set mine up. I need to uh, avoid that line. I need to avoid that line. And you're so Go towards the boy, but drop short, and then now I go towards the boat. Oh, you all right? Yeah. When I said go towards the boy, I didn't mean land on top of it. Well, I'm just showing you how accurate uh. of a caster I am. <laughs> okay? You said in line with the boys. And you I la landed on it. In between. In the between two the two boys. boys. You can't get straight to no. Right. Well, let me bake mine up then. So amongst the weed here, hopefully Adam's got the first fish, a bream. We've been here about 45 minutes and um, we cast mid-range, then I dropped short and Adam's gone long and he's got a bite long. So I think I might bring mine in and go long. Hey? Still on. Yeah, you can feel it. Yeah, well, that's alright. Little green, but it's better than nothing. Is it there? Oh no, it's a green. Or back. No, nice green. Nice green, mate. Yeah, that's a good one. I was yeah, trying to get. Let's have a look. Nice green, mate. There we go. I'm mate. I need to I know, oh, let me just get it out on video. That's a nice bream. I'm trying to get some underwater shots on that, but uh, lovely, mate. Right, let me get a photo. Yeah, there's a bite. Yeah, come on. Go on. Slack nine. It's a bream bite. Oh, what's that? Poppus. There's something on there, it's small. Can't feel any kicks, mate. Oh, yes, I can. Might be all right, actually, mate. 
I'll be all right. I don't know. It's hard to tell. There's a lot of weed on that. Yeah, some lunging. I thought it feels hand kicking. There we go, small uh, black bring. Lovely. Right, to the boat. I think I've landed on the boat. <laughs> Still anything? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, decent as well. Decent as well. Let's get wet then, mate. Uh, you're not far away, are you? It'd be good for the video. Okay. One more, maybe. Right. I need to go out a bit further, don't I? Well, let's have a look at him. Nice black bream, isn't it, mate? Nice black bream, mate. Second black bream of the day. <laughs> You're uh, th sorry. third on the bank. Second keeper black bream of the day. <laughs> uh, we've had three in total. <laughs> Mine was fairly visible. Right, let me take a photo of that, mate. So we are about an hour short of high and the tide's really started pulling around to the right. Um, so our baits now, we're casting in at 11 o'clock and they're swinging around to two o'clock. We're getting bites, it's very intermittent at the moment. We're chumming up close in, hopefully. There'll be a few more bring to come out. We've got two keepers which is good. Um, we're just playing around with distance at the moment to see where we can get our baits to sit reasonable. Because um, if you're going too far they're just swinging around too much. Just gone high tide. 
the bikes have dried up a bit. This, um, I had to keep the black bream and I had a little one and then the tide started to pull and the bikes have gone off. There's so much activity in the water with canoeists, swimmers, paddle boarders. Um, I don't know if it's putting the fish off but I think it might have something to do with the tide. Um, hopefully once it's starting to, it is starting to ebb now and hopefully the, the pool will start to ease. Um, and we'll see if the bikes come back on then. There's Aram, he's bringing in his other rod. Nothing's happened on that. It's so busy here. My, oh, oh, actually, we haven't, I, I think Aram's bream rig's out, but mine's not. I've just baited it back up. It's been very quiet since probably 12 o'clock, and the time now is, what is the time now? I don't know, I can't tell you, but it's probably nearly two o'clock. Um, we're hoping this tide pull starts to ease in a bit and see if the bream come back on the feed. And see how it goes. Four o'clock, is it? It's four o'clock. So that's now over two hours after high. The tide rip has eased now. It's still going to the right, as you can see from the boat facing the right. But we are gripping now. We're holding, and I've just had bites. So we've gone, what, three and a half hours without bites? Wouldn't you say three and a half hours without anything? I would say, yeah. And now, and there we go. I think I'm getting. Yeah, I've got bream knocks again. So hopefully we might get a little bit of action now. Finally, Greg. There's a lot of weed on it. But it's a fish after. Four hours, isn't it? Yeah, let's have a look at him, shall we? I, I can see him. Mm, I think you're pushing it there. Well done, mate. There's a little black green there. Very nice. Well done. Well, they're starting to bite again now, aren't they, mate? There's a tiny little black bream for Aram. He's had three out now. We're getting a few bites here now. I've just missed a decent one. There's more spaghetti than fish. There is more spaghetti than fish, but... It's been bearable, isn't it? The weed has been bearable. Just bringing it back. I'm gonna have to check mine because it's gone dead after that bite. But we're, well, I don't know, what's the time now? Like 20 to five, we're nearly three hours down, aren't we? And um, we're starting to get bites, but I don't know how long they're gonna last. So that's all the weed I've just brought in after saying I was gonna check because I thought it'd been stripped. And there is a little black bream. Hooked in the head, so he's going back. Let's get him back. Right, here we are. <sighs> What is he doing? What are you doing? Blowing my nose. Why are you blowing your nose? You don't know what blowing your nose means. It means you got a bogey up there? No. You blow your nose when you know that it's the end of your session. Well, you're right. Well done, mate. It is the end of our session. Um, I've never blown my nose to signal that. I tend to just take my rods in. 
tends to be a sign enough that I've, I've finished fishing, just taking the rods in. Um, yeah, it's been poor, the, the, the tide has been a, a large one, a lot of weed coming through and a, a, a nice tide rip round to the right. It's only sort of in the last hour stopped and um, the water was too far back I think now for, for the fish to feed. Um, it's been dead for a bit. We've had a few black bream, can't tell whether the chum worked because there have been other people fishing but I think predominantly they've been fishing for bigger things and I haven't seen anything come out. Um, anyway, we'll probably head back here at some point on a smaller tide. And we can see if we'll uh, get some bigger black bream out for our from our for, for my dinner, for his dinner. Um, I need dinner too. Oh, you need dinner too. Right, we we want to come back here and get a load of black bream, and yeah, uh, maybe do an evening session where we can um, target a ray or a bass as the sun's dropping. Anyway, um, hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you like this channel.